Hey there, in this video, we're going to set up this Shure MV7 microphone. And I'm not sure whether you just caught our previous video where we were saying how we've recently only just moved across from the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus to this and why, and we did a little comparison. If you didn't catch that, be sure to watch it up here. Or maybe you don't need that because you've already got this mic and you know this is the one to go for. But uh, we're absolutely loving this microphone. And recently with Ecamm coming out with their virtual mic, it's just made this so easy to deal with any sync issues between camera and microphone. And that really has sealed the deal for us of moving across to this as our main microphone. So you're here anyway to see how to set this thing up. And you do have three options for connecting this. You can connect through through XLR, you can connect over USB, and potentially you can connect it from the headphone output into your camera or another jack input. We've found, as we demonstrated in that previous video, the difference in those, and the XLR comes in a bit flat. It really wants to go through a mixer or a roadcaster, something like that. We've used that, we've tried it, we've dismissed it and said, no, actually, this microphone is designed for you to use over USB and use the app that comes with it. And that's what we're gonna be showing you here. So all you need to do, firstly, you gotta find a stand for this. We did have a, a cheap Neewa one that was about $20 and a flexi arm. I found it was a bit wobbly and it annoyed me a little bit, but that's fine if you just wanna get going with that. We actually just this week bought the Elgato Wave low profile stand, which I just think is beautiful the way it <laughs> mounts on my desk here and can move in and out. It just finishes the look of being really professional. I love the way the cable management, as you can see, I'm quite a tidy person. Minimal is my middle name. And so the way I can just run cables through this and I don't see anything, I absolutely love that. But anyway, that's kind of aside from the microphone itself. So whatever that be, you need to attach it to a stand and you do want to get this pretty close to you. Now this microphone will work if you want to have it right up in your face in a podcaster style. As ever, the closer this microphone is to your mouth, the better the quality will be. But the reason I went for this microphone is you don't need to have it as close as that. You know, this is out of view or it's just come back in now because I moved it. But I can be here and that microphone is out of view down the bottom there. And that's what I was looking for. So get this mounted up again on a tight crop like this. You kind of could come from above or you could come from underneath. I like it coming up from down here. But once that's connected up, USB's plugged in. You do want to head over to the Shure website and download the app, the Shure Plus Motive app. Download it, install it. So once that's downloaded, you're going to open it up and it will look like this. What I should have just pointed out is there are buttons and dials over this microphone. Uh, and in the quick start guide here, you will see and learn that actually I can adjust the volume of the microphone if I've got headphones plugged into it to be able to monitor. Then I can adjust the volume of them by wiping over the top of here. I have an option to touch it and mute it. Honestly, I found all this a little bit overwhelming and I'm thinking this is going to be hard to explain all this to people if you've got to adjust the volume and things on there. And what if I accidentally knock that button without realizing it? And then as I've come to use this and study it and actually look at the instruction book, I realized that all of that is for when we're in the manual mode. And if I want to come in here into auto, I don't need to worry about any controls on this. It's nice that it's on there and it's a, it's a visual level for me to be able to see how loud it's coming through, or I can even turn that off if I want to. So don't panic when you hear people talking about setting it all from here, you don't have to. And I'm gonna show you the quick way to do this. So we could go into manual and there's an option here where I can actually, so I can mute it. And that's doing the same as if I touched on the microphone and muted it over here. I can adjust the gain manually. That's the volume. I can do this monitor mix. This would be more if I were listening through it. And maybe as a musician, do I want to hear my voice or do I want to hear a mix coming through of some other sound, some system audio? Maybe it's a track that's playing alongside that. So that's really there for that. You and I sitting here just recording videos would want to keep that over. Uh, EQ, we've got some settings in there. We've got a limiter so that we're not talking too loud into it. There is a compressor on here. And then we've got this live meter. So if we don't want this ring sh jumping around on here, we can turn that off. And now we've just got the set of lights and we can even go into night mode, which then dims those lights down. To be honest, <laughs> 
I'm a simple man. I like the idea of putting this in auto. And actually, when I look in here in the instruction book, I do like that it says in here, probably the most exciting and unique feature about the Motive app is auto level mode. Your voice and mic position are always changing. Auto level mode sets your gain perfectly in real time so your output level stays consistent. This allows you to focus on your content, not the mic technique, and gives your audience a more consistent listening experience. That ticks the boxes for me. So I don't need to worry about manual and setting anything up on here. I'm gonna come on to auto. So again, I do have an option in the software to mute this microphone if I wanted to. I still can do this monitor mix, leave it over on the mic side. It's then saying about the positioning. Now the instructions do tell me about this near and far mode and basically six inches. If I'm within six inches of the microphone, I'm in near mode. If I'm between six and 18 inches, then I'm in far mode that's quite a distance that I can have this microphone away and it will still pick up. Now, obviously the goal is always to get the mic as close as possible, but uh, I'm working here. What distance will I say we're at? 10 inches away. So I'm right in there in the middle of that range for being in far mode. And then I've got a setting down here for the tone of this. And uh, again, let me just read to you straight out the instruction book. Let me flick it over. We can select dark mode to emphasize low end for that classic broadcast sound. We can select natural to benefit from auto level mode, but leaving your voice tone unaffected. So that's the, the clean input as much as possible coming through. And then we can select bright to add clarity to your voice. I'm flicking this back to my dark mode. I quite like the idea of sounding a bit more like a broadcaster or that radio voice. And I can again adjust down here in this auto mode whether I want this metering to stay on. So I can turn that off if I want. I can go back to night mode and it just dims things down. I actually quite like having the levels on. It still bothers me that maybe as I move this, look how easy it is just to touch the mute button. Uh, that scares me a little bit. So I was relieved to see that there is this padlock symbol up here. When I lock that, I now can't touch anything on here on the mic or I can't lock anything in the software. That is all locked down and will be consistent. I can also do this locking and unlocking from the microphone itself. There is there's a button on one side for muting. There's another one for selecting whether I'm adjusting the headphone and volume. If I press them both in for two seconds, it will do the same thing and unlock this. And that's as simple as it is. That's your microphone. You now in any microphone inputs, if you're going into Zoom or anywhere else, you can select your Shure MV7 as your microphone and it will give you this lovely sound. We really have been impressed with this and how it has taken our audio to the next level really. And I would encourage you, unless you're into the tech and really want to delve into this, leave this set on those auto settings, depending on how far away that is from you. So there it is, it's set, it's as easy as that. I've chosen near or far, I've chosen the tone that I wanted, I've locked it down, so I'm not going to affect anything over here. I can now close down the app if I want to, and it's as simple as that. And I love that, we're all about simple. And if you feel at some point you want to improve this and uh, take it on a step. Maybe you think you're going to start a podcast and you notice that just bringing it in closer to you is better. Maybe you want to upgrade and start using the XLR and going out to a mixer and really going to town with this. Well, this microphone has got all that ready to go and you can grow with it as much as you want. But I'm perfectly happy staying here on full auto. This is awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let us know if you have any problems or any questions. Uh, pop it down in the comments. And if you want to know about the full equipment that we've got here, this is just one element of it. If you want to know about the camera, the lights and all the rest of it, uh, do check out our gear guide up here that shows you exactly what we've got with links to it. And then a link if you really want to, to come through to our Pro Video Academy, where we walk you through step by step how to put all this together so you can get this same studio look at home. If you found that useful, please do give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that and we look forward to seeing you in another video.